Among pro motocross racers, there seems to be a dissatisfaction that breeds success, and a gratitude for the status and salary of racing that produces defeat. Perhaps the scariest thought for any racer is the belief that restlessness and success have an unbreakable relationship. Mom and dad raised me to be just a nice guy and, and love life and be appreciative of all that I have. And in motocross, pretty much go out there and it's an all out duel. If you're not mean and aggressive, it reflects on your riding. It's definitely hard to go out there and just be like, you know, I'm gonna smash some guys and I'm gonna kill all these guys. It's just not my way of living. The sacrifices you had to make, it's definitely tough. When I was 16, I moved to California with my mechanic. You either make it or break it. I was seeing all my friends going to prom or doing like a normal teenager thing, and I'm over here away from my family. I think it was just that, wanting to just win. Just wanted to prove everybody wrong, and if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it right. Bad risk, what bad risk? He just wants it bad, and good things happen when you do. Cooper Webb wins the moto. Despite coming into the season nursing a broken wrist, Cooper Webb has delivered results that have put him in a position to contend for the outdoor title. But Webb's disdain for preparation has his trainer Gareth Swanepoel working daily to push back complacency. Cooper doesn't enjoy much besides winning. He hates training. He's not gonna do more than he ever has to, that's for damn sure, now I gotta push him and push him. His teammate and training partner, Aaron Plessinger, may be one of the most well-liked, fun-loving riders on the racetrack, but must improve his sixth place position in the championship if he is going to satisfy the expectations that come with riding for an elite factory team. It's already been four or five races and I haven't had an overall podium yet. I need to get going because this is my second year. They're expecting me to get podium finishes. In 1949, it was illegal to buy or sell alcohol in Robeson County, North Carolina. So a town sprung up around a beer stand just south of the border in South Carolina. The Mexican-themed city with its mascot Pedro grew to popularity in the 1960s, but has since been in decline, except for the motocross training facility that has been established in the last decade. It is like a little Mexican Vegas from the 60s in the middle of nowhere. We here to benefit the guys and we felt that riding the humidity and the rudder tracks and cutting the travel time down is gonna benefit them. So it's what you make of it. They have all the tools right here to build champions. Swanepoel, Webb and Plessinger are preparing for round six at Redbud Raceway. Webb has won two championships in the 250 Supercross series, which will require him to graduate to the 450cc class next year. 2016 will be his final opportunity to win an outdoor title in the 250 class. And up until round five at Muddy Creek last weekend, Cooper did not have a single overall race victory. Last weekend, I had to have a big talk with him in between races. I felt that he let Savachi win that first race. He felt that he didn't have enough time to close him down. And I said, well, you can't give your rivals any kind of confidence like that. You need to show up and work. He went out for the second race, and Cooper Webb was back. Doors open. Oh. He slams it and takes the lead for Mac around. Listen, the crowd come to life. Cooper Webb is going to win here at Muddy Creek. Although the win brought Cooper closer to points leader Joey Savacci, it did little in helping Swanepoel's daily task of prodding Webb to train in the humidity of South Carolina. I want to fight with them every day. I'm lazy when it comes to training. I definitely just do it what Swanee says, no matter how much I might hate it. For Plessinger, also known as AP, Last weekend was his worst race of the year, with 14th and 13th place finishes. Oh, big pileup! Plessinger. Plessinger, two motos in a row. It happened in the first moto as well. Every other veteran rider on Aaron's team is a contender in the championship, leaving Plessinger with no excuses as to why he does not have an overall podium finish yet this year. I mean, Swanee sat down. He just told me if I'm not solid, it's not looking good for the team for next year. He asked me if this is what I really wanted to do, and it kind of sank in right there. 
I said to myself, I gotta go. Yeah, we got AP on pole position. Yeah, I know. But why is that? He's carrying more speed than you are. While Plessinger's practice lap times are comparable to Cooper's, those in his inner circle believe he is struggling on the racetrack because he is too satisfied with his life as a professional racer and lacks the selfishness to push others aside for his own benefit. The guys that are standout winners are the most self-absorbed, selfish cars around. The champions, I don't want to say they're mean or anything, but they're definitely not like me. You see Coop, he's really aggressive and he puts it in there at times. My dad and Gareth and everybody's told me, just get mad. And a picture perfect day for the 43rd running of this summertime Independence Day Classic. The tens of thousands of people that have made the pilgrimage here are focused on Red Bud, the most iconic motocross track in the world. He's got a stand. And he just charges a bump seat and his back ends all over the place and it's all over the place. Maybe we need to have a sit down with him, you know what I'm saying? Coop just forgets that he can't just ride off of talent and sometimes he needs like an attitude adjustment. Sometimes you just need to whip him in the shape. Bad. I mean, you are the fastest guy in the world for sitting as much as you sat. It's ridiculous, dude. Stand a lot more. If you stand, you'll be good. Stand. My dad was a pro surfer and shaped surfboards for 40 years. When I was about 15, we were actually building a house. He made me go dig ditches and help him with the flooring and just kind of showed me like how real life and real jobs are. That's when it all clicked for me. Don't want to be a normal guy. Just always trying to shut him up. Just prove him wrong. They are off and into turn number one. 214, that's Austin Fortner. Here comes Fortner, here comes Cooper Webb, the rookie out of the inside. Cooper Webb, the veteran, out of the outside. The outside now becomes the inside as they go across the stripe. Come on! Fortner looks over his shoulder. He looks at the 17 and he's bringing the heat. The 17 of Cooper Webb goes out of the inside. Cooper Webb hooked it up. He jumped out of the inside. He hooked those tires up and jumped right into the number one position. Good, 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 good. Cooper Webb, what makes me want to work for him and sacrifice for him to achieve what he needs to achieve? The way he rides is just sheer heart. Not a lot of people have that. Cooper Webb has won it here today. Moto number one from Red Bud, Michigan. American motocross culture, they believe you have to be you know, Iron Man, train so much and all that kind of stuff. Myself and Bobby Reagan, we're looking at something different in riders. We're trying to find riders that hate losing. That's all we go for, and then I'll do the rest. After holding off Savachi for the win in Moto 1 at Red Bud, Webb avoided the multiple crashes taking place around him in Moto 2, passed Alex Martin for the lead with four laps remaining, and achieved the first 1-1 Moto sweep of his outdoor career. Cooper would also take the points lead as Savachi suffered a brutal crash and finished 16th. Joey Savachi will give up his points lead here, and Cooper Webb, the undisputed overall champion here at Red Bud. Plessinger finished 11th overall with 10th and 11th place finishes, including a crash at the start of Moto2, further exposing his need for greater intensity on the racetrack. The people that say I should be on the podium, they're right, and I'm definitely trying to get there. These past few weeks, I've just been getting a little bit of anger in me, and I'm gonna succeed. There's no choice. I have to let the anger out at some point.